In this video, we'll be looking at the triangle law of vector addition. Let's dive right in. Let's form a triangle with vertices at A, B, and C. The vector AB is 3, 1. The vector BC is 1, 4. And the vector AC is 4, 5. Notice that when you add the vectors AB and BC, you'll get the resultant vector AC. That's the triangle law of vector addition. The triangle law of vector addition states that when two vectors are represented as two sides of a triangle, then the third side of the triangle represents the resultant of the two vectors. This law is used to add two vectors when the first vector's head is joined to the tail of the second vector, and then joining the tail of the first vector to the head of the second vector to form a triangle, and hence obtain the resultant sum vector. Let's look at a few exam questions. In part one of the first question, we are asked to find the vector AD in terms of A and B. Take note of the information given. We will apply the triangle law to get the vector AD. To get from point A to point D, we can go from A to O and then from O to D. This gives us the vector equation AD equals AO plus OD. The vector OA is A. Vector AO would indicate a change of direction, hence a change of sign. That means the vector AO is minus A. We do not know the vector OD. However, we know that OD is 2 times AB, which means that OD is 2 times B, since vector AB is equal to B. Hence the vector AD is minus A plus 2B. In part 2, we are finding the vector BC. To get from B to C, we can go from B to A, then from A to D, then from D to C. The vector AB is B, which means vector BA is minus B. The vector AD is minus A plus 2B. Now OA is twice the length of DC, hence DC is half of OA. So vector DC is half of A. If we group like terms, we get vector BC equal minus half, A plus B. Now compare vectors AD and BC. You'll notice that if you should multiply vector BC by 2, you'll end up with vector AD. This means that both vectors are parallel to each other. In this first example, we need to find three vectors in terms of X and Y. Let's begin with the vector MN. Now, how can I get from the point M to point N? We can move from point M to point O, and then from point O to point N. Hence, we get the equation now being shown on the screen. Now, vector OM is 6Z, which means that vector MO is negative 6Z since the direction changed. The vector ON is 2X. Hence our solution, vector MN, is negative 6Z plus 2x. The second vector we were asked to find was ln. How can we get from point L to point N? We can move from point L to point O, and then from point O to point N. Hence, we get the equation that's now showing on the screen. The vector LO is negative 4y's, since its direction is opposite to LO. The vector on is 2x. Therefore, our solution is vector ln is equal to negative 4y plus 2x. The third and final vector that we were asked to find was the vector ab. To get from point A to point B, we can go from point A to point M, and then from point M to point B. So vector ab is equal to vector am plus mb. Now, the question gave us the ratio of the lengths LA to LM as 1 to 2. Add the ratios, we get 3, which means that AM is two-thirds of the length of the whole line, LM. Based on the ratio given for the lengths MB to BN, MB is two-thirds the length of the line, MN. So, vector AB is two-thirds LM plus two-thirds MN. We can easily factorize two-thirds from each term. Now, remember that already calculated the vector LM, so we can substitute negative 4y plus 6z for LM. 
vector Mn was found earlier to be negative 6z plus 2x, so we can substitute the terms into the equation. 6z minus 6z is 0, so we are left with positive 2x and negative 4y in the brackets. Our final task in this question was to state two geometrical relationships between ln and ab. Notice that ln is the same as 2x minus 4y, which means that ab is two-thirds times ln. The other geometrical relationship is vector ln is parallel to vector ab. Remember that two vectors are parallel to each other if we can multiply one vector by a constant to get the other vector. In this case, the constant is two-thirds. In the third and final problem, we are given three position vectors. A position vector gives the position or location of a point relative to the origin O. In part one, we are finding the length or magnitude of the vector OR, which is negative three, four. The magnitude of a vector is given by the formula root x square plus y square. For the vector OR, x is negative three and yours is four. Substitute these values and we get the length of the position vector OR to be five units. To find the vector RS, we can reverse the points and subtract. A position vector has the same values as the coordinates for the respective points. Hence, we know the position vectors given represents the coordinates for R, S, and T. Now, vector RS is S minus R. One minus negative three is equivalent to one plus three, which is 4. Below we have 1 minus 4, which is negative 3. To get the vector st, we do the same, reverse the points and subtract. 5 minus 1 is 4, while minus 2 minus 1 is negative 3. To prove that three points lie on the same straight line, we need to demonstrate that the vectors formed between each pair of points are parallel. Now, vectors rs and st are obviously parallel vectors, since they are the same. Now, both vectors share the common point S, hence for RS to be parallel to ST, all three points will have to lie on the same straight line. Another way to prove that the three points lie on the same straight line would be to plot the points on a Cartesian plane. R has coordinates minus three, four, S has coordinates one, one, and T has coordinates five, minus two. If we extend a line, it will pass through all three points, hence completing the proof. Our final task is to find the vector S, M. Again, we can solve this problem using different methods. We can represent the vector T, M on a graph. Vector T, M is minus one, four, which means that to get from point T to point M, we move one unit to the left and then four units up. To get the vector S, M, can determine that we travel three units to the right and then one unit up to get from point S to point M. Hence the vector S M is three one. Another route we could have taken is to find point M by equating the vector T M to M minus T. We can group negative T on the right hand side to transpose for M. Now vector T M is minus one and four. The point T is five negative two. Now negative one plus five is four, while four plus minus two is two. Now to get vector SM, we can reverse the points and subtract to get M minus S. We can substitute four two for M and one one for S. Four minus one is three, while two minus one is one. Therefore, vector SM is three one. In the next video, we will be looking at the dot product and the angle between two vectors. See you soon.